Yeah, for people who weren't here this morning, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end of the three presentations. Um, we've had a global perspective already this morning, but I'm really pleased to have Mr. Taro Hattori here from Japan. Um, perhaps few countries in the world have faced some of these issues as urgently as Japan has in recent years. So I'm sure, like many of you, I'm looking forward to hearing his presentation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm Toru Hattori. I came from uh, Central Research Institute of Electric Power Industry. This is a um, non-profit research organization funded by uh, uh, electric power companies in Japan. Uh, uh, as Chairman already mentioned, that uh, the Japan has been experiencing the serious uh, capacity shortage problem uh, after the earthquake, but uh, this also uh, increased awareness of the possibility of the smart metering and demand response with respect to uh, peak load management. Uh, this is uh, the uh, simple outline of talk. Uh, my presentation is not uh, well structured, but uh, uh, I would like to mention uh, the situation of the partial digits after the earthquake. And then I uh, will also talk about the expectation of the smart metering and the demand response. And then uh, I will also touch on the experience experiences in uh, summer of uh, summer uh, in the past two years, how we overcome the capacity shortages problem without uh, uh, smart metering. Um, during the past two years, we had a capacity shortages problem, but the nature of the problem is slightly different in, t in the year 2011 and 2012. Uh, right after the earthquake, uh, we had an immediate capacity shortages problem uh, because uh, the most uh, uh, many uh, uh, power plants are uh, 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 directly d damaged by the earthquake and tsunami. And this results in the ro rolling blackouts in March in Tokyo and its suburb area. And the electricity shortages was expected to be serious in the eastern part of Japan during the summer of 2011. Uh, to give you just uh, a, a bit of background, uh, we have 10 electric power companies. And the, there are two uh, utilities in the east in the circle, in the, in the blue uh, area. These are the areas that directly affected by the tsunami and earthquake. And this is the region that uh, serious capacity shortages is expected during the 2011. And uh, uh, I guess uh, some of you know that uh, we have uh, two different frequencies within the countries. Uh, so the eastern part, uh, the 50 hertz and the 60 hertz in the west. So the interregional trail between the region is very restricted. And uh, there is a frequency converter between the regions, and that capacity is very limited. Uh, however, um, there is an indirect uh, impact of the earthquake that is related to the uh, nuclear uh, accident. After the accident of the, at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plants, most nuclear reactors have not been able to restart after the normal uh, periodic inspections uh, uh, because of the safety concerns, safety and security concerns. And this results in a loss of about one fourth or one third of total uh, generation outputs by May. 2012. There is some period that ne no reactors are operating uh, uh, in, in this year. Uh, at, at the moment, there is only two uh, units uh, operating out of 50 units uh, during this summer. So the this year, uh, the electricity shortages was expected to be very serious in the western part. And of course, the, the the problem remained in the east, but it it's gonna it, it was said to be more serious in the western part. But uh, there are two utilities heavily depend on the nuclear outputs, and uh, that's a uh, Kansai and Kyushu Electric. It's uh, the southern uh, one in the the Kansai had the second largest city, Osaka, 
and uh, the Kyushu is a southern uh, part of uh, uh, serves a southern part of uh, the country. Um, this is the uh, uh, so we have uh, we have 54 units of nuclear power plant before the earthquake. Uh, uh, four of them are uh, uh, it's, uh, in, in uh, Fukushima Daiichi, and so we have 50 units. Uh, however, that only two units are operating right now, and we th that the nuclear outputs accounted for about one quarter. I mean, the quarter of the total outputs before the earthquake. So it's a huge impact. So the government uh, took uh, electricity supply demand measures uh, after the earthquake for the summer 2011. Basically, the government set the target of demand reduction rate in for for every sector equally, and uh, uh, set as uh, minus 15 percent in the area of Tokyo and Tohoku, that is eastern part of the country. The northern part, Hokkaido, is a uh, is a winter peak region. So it's only uh, apply for uh, uh, Tokyo and Tohoku areas. Uh, because the uh, the rolling blackout experience was so bad uh, after the earthquake, so uh, government and industry decided not to use this, I mean, not to implement this blackout in principle. Of course, they had to prepare for uh, uh, the safety net. So what they do is that for large customers, the government put into effect the restriction of uh, electricity use based on the law. So this is uh, uh, actually the mandatory rationing. The, the large industrial customers face penalty uh, if, uh, if, uh, they, if they are not able to meet the target. For household customers, uh, the government just simply encourage customers to save electricity. Uh, by giving um, information uh, how to save electricity uh, and so forth. And you can see the information on the, uh, the following URL. And this is an example of the information the governments uh, are sent. Uh, I mean that uh, this is available on the website. The government set up a special portal site for uh, uh, electricity saving. And this is just an electricity saving tip for a household. Uh, how to save electricity in, in the use of uh, air conditioning, refrigerator, and then below we continue the list of how we can save, how much you can save by uh, doing a couple of things. Um, this is sort of immediate sort of uh, um, countermeasures, but uh, the government also uh, uh, consider a, a mid-term uh, solution to the uh, capacity shortage problem. Uh, that's uh, one, one is a smart metering. Uh, of course, the uh, uh, we the the industry and the government uh, has a plan to 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 install the these meters. So before the earthquake, so the the government has published a strategic strategic energy plan. Uh, and set the goal to introduce smart meters and the home energy management system for all users in principle as, al as early as possible in the 2020s. But after the earthquake, the government decided to accelerate this uh, uh, goal, uh, I mean the, the, the deployment of the smart meters and set a new goal to install them to cover the 80% of demand within the next five years. Uh, so this summarizes the current status of uh, smart meter deployment in Japan. Uh, I'd like to mention here that uh, Japanese utilities have, uh, 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 I mean, the, the, the billing practice in, in among the Japanese utilities is not very bad. Uh, the meters are read every month, so customers receive the bill every month, and that's, a very, and that's very accurate. Uh, but still, uh, uh, they are very active now uh, in installing the smart meters. Kansai is um, uh, the most active uh, company, the, the second largest utilities in Japan. Uh, they already installed uh, more than one million new meters as of March 2012. And the second, uh, large, uh, the, the second uh, runner is a Kyushu Electric. Uh, it's already installed 180,000 smart meters. 
Uh, Tokyo Electric, that's the largest uh, electric ut utility in, in Japan, uh, already installed a couple meters, but uh, now it's made an extensive request for comments on the specification of the smart meters. This is to reduce the cost by standardization, and this is open up for international uh, uh, firms, uh, vendors, or uh, manufacturers. However, other utilities are, are a bit cautious and uh, installing meters on mainly for the purpose of conducting field test trials, mainly for uh, uh, testing the communications. The smart meters has to come with uh, a demand response, of course, and there are uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, demand response pilot program for the residential customers. This uh, government pilot program actually started before the earthquake, so uh, uh, actually we can compare the, the difference between the you know, before the earthquake and after the earthquake. And this is the, sh the results the of the for the 2011, and this indicates that the, uh, the you know the pricing menu such as the time of use or so critical peak pricing really uh, uh, change the behavior and leads to uh, demand reduc peak load uh, reductions. Uh, even though that the people are so much, uh, uh, you know, people are so conscious about the energy use, uh, the, this um, incentive actually work. Uh, and the similar pilot programs have been conducted in some other, uh, some of the smart community demonstration projects projects. We have four projects in the countries and you can check this uh, website uh, to, to, to get more detail. This is one of the examples of uh, 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 experiment of the pricing menu. Uh, it's conducted in the Kitakushu area. Uh, they, uh, they set this uh, uh, dynamic kind of pricing menu and uh, and it, uh, the right-hand side figure shows that the, there is an impact. Uh, so the summer of 2012, uh, the situation has slightly changed. And as I mentioned, that the capacity shortages was expected to be more serious in the western part of Japan. And at and the utilities try to send information and signal the uh, seriousness of the capacity shortages problem in their regions. But at the time, uh, people do not trust the utilities. So government came in and set up this, uh, uh, the uh, electricity supply demand review meeting to investigate the potential for power shortages in the western part of Japan. Uh, they actually uh, leach reached a similar conclusion, so, uh, uh, and then, uh, then the government asked for uh, uh, energy saving this summer uh, in, the, in the western part of Japan. They basically, I mean, the government basically set the uh, electricity saving target of uh, from minus 3% to 10%, depending on the regions for the, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, several utilities in the west. Uh, this time, there's no mandatory rationing strongly but uh, government strongly encouraged to save energy in these areas and at the same time these utilities had to prepare for rolling blackouts as safety nets um, although the utilities only started to install the smart meters the some of you some utilities try to offer a new electricity rate that's a time of use rate uh, TEPCO and Kansai Electric uh, introduced new new time of use rate uh, for the summer 2012, but only a small number of households have signed up these new rates before the summer. Uh, I have to mention here that uh, most of utilities already introduced a time of use pricing uh, menu for residential customers. They promote uh, so-called all electric homes and the customers with all electric homes typically uh, uh, sign up the uh, uh, time of use rates. It is estimated about seven or eight percent of customers are on the time of use pricing. Um, 
Um, so the, they offer a new rate, but not many people uh, sign up. Uh, what, what the utilities did for the past two summers is to, is to provide information on the uh, electricity demand and supply what they call the uh, electricity forecast, or we, we say denki yoho in Japanese. Uh, it's kind of play word because uh, uh, weather forecast say, w uh, weather forecast in Japanese is tenki yoho, and it's, uh, it's a denki yoho, it's the denki is electricity and tenki is weather, so it's a play word. So um, anyway, the, the uh, electric power companies typically provided information of on the forecast of electricity uh, demand and supply uh, on their website, and, and they have also been displayed in major train stations, and it's uh, it's also appeared on the television and the major portal sites on the internet like uh, Yahoo or uh, other internet providers portal sites. So typically, if you start a browser on the day, you can uh, immediately see the, the forecast, uh, the, uh, uh, electricity forecast of that day. And perhaps I think it raised awareness of the need to save electricity in the country. So this is a snapshot of the uh, typical electricity forecast. Um, the, the number on the left, uh, upper left, 85%, this is uh, uh, what they call the consumption rate. Uh, this is calculated simply by dividing the total electricity consumption by uh, total supply, I mean capacity, uh, indicating this, uh, the tightness of electricity supply and demand. So if this number reach, you know, exceeds 90%, people began to feel, oh, you know, we've got to do something to save electricity and in order to avoid the blackouts and so forth. And uh, on the below that it shows the uh, uh, forecast consumption and actual level of consumption in the during the day, and you can also retrieve the data in the past. Uh, so if you are looking for a good time series data, this is a good point of uh, reference. And this uh, data uh, updated every five minutes, so it's really up to date. And um, this information also uh, provided through the various web portal sites. And this is the uh, sort of the summarize the history of the uh, consumption rate in the in the August. Um, so what happened the uh, electricity demand and supply during the summer uh, this summer? Um, um, recently. Uh, uh, electric power company set, uh, sent out a press release on the electricity demand and supply during the last summer. And many of, I haven't really uh, analyzed all these uh, 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 press releases, but many of them indicate that there have been the reduction of peak demand around by, by around five, or ten, ten, five to 10 percent after adjusting the temperature difference. And uh, uh, they conclude perhaps this is due to the consumer's eff customer's effort of saving electricity. They also that d they also show the decomposition of into a different sector of uh, and the customer class, and they indicate uh, the household customers also contribute to the the saving. Uh, 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 more or less a similar uh, figure with the large customers. Uh, although so uh, in the during the this summer, although there were a couple of days that the electricity demand and supply condition was tight, they managed without power outages. You can see this calendar on the uh, maybe August 30 exceeds the 90 percent. So we have a couple of days like that, but uh, basically we managed without serious outages. And this is the, the data given by TEPCO and showing the comparison of maximum demand. On the horizontal axis, there is a temperature in Celsius. And uh, you can see that uh, the demand f uh, during the 2010, before the earthquake, was higher, highest. And you can see that the reduction of the peak demand during the 2011 and 2012 
Uh, however, they note that there is a slight increase from the two. I mean, the slight increase in 2012 as compared to 2011. I'm not sure if this indicates some recovery of the demand or if you know if I'm, I'm not sure if this questions the per persistency of uh, electricity saving effort. I'm not sure, but uh, it's uh, it's maybe a, a future research topic. So to sum up, uh, uh, the demand response and smart meters becoming in increasingly important in Japan due to the capacity shortages after the earthquake. Uh, this is uh, uh, actually the uh, unfortunate, but uh, it turns out that uh, increased awareness of uh, the possibility of DR and smart meters. And, and although there are some evidence as to the potential for load reduction by TOU or CPP, it may take a while for those uh, for for these time varying rates are accepted by many uh, household many households. And uh, during the time that without smart meters, uh, utilities and government try to disseminate the information on ele electricity saving and ele electricity supply and demand. I'm not sure about the impact of uh, these information provision. However, uh, I believe this helped the many uh, custom. I mean, the many households to 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 figure out the seriousness of uh, uh, the capacity shortages problem in the in the country. Thank you very much.